just say yes. And by the way, just let me quickly clarify. Um, I'm in no way, shape or form advocating for you to say yes. Every time somebody asks for something, I have something very specific in mind. And I'll tell you about that in just a moment. How's it going? I'm Bill DeWeese, professional voiceover talent, voiceover coach, and um, demo producer. And my spring sale is on. Did you know that? It started yesterday. It's my big annual spring fever. The spring fever sale is a big deal because it's when I pull out all the stops. When I give you lots of my best training at a very minimal cost, lots of training, very small cost. And it's only this week, so make sure you take advantage of it. There's a link below in the description. Get the best VO training to help you move ahead in your voiceover career. And by the way, thanks for checking in. And uh, congrats to Nephi in Knoxville, who was first in this morning. In just a couple of moments here, I'm going to check in and uh, do some shout outs and acknowledge everybody who's on. So if you don't mind taking a second to let me know where you're watching or listening this morning, that would be fantastic. And of course, your subscriptions. Your likes, your shares are always so incredibly appreciated. So I love to share. I think the best way for me to, to teach and to coach is to share from my own experience, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this is a lesson that I learned the hard way. And that's where the just say yes comes in. Because when you first get involved in voiceover, and I think anybody who's done this for any length of time will back me up on this and say that. There are just some areas of voiceover you'll find that either you're just not very good at or you feel very unconfident with because you just, you know, it, it might be the terminology that you have to work with. It might be the style. It could be a number of things, but not everything is going to feel comfortable or good or even, you know, showcase you in your best light when you first get started. But that in no way should deter you from developing yourself in as many areas as possible. To be successful in voiceover in 2024 and beyond, you need to learn to be a good utility player. A utility player is somebody who can do a little bit of everything and do it pretty darn well. So you want to develop your skill set as broadly as you possibly can. Let me share the story. So, and this came about because, uh, well, yesterday I, 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 um, I wrote an email to a client, which I'll tell you about in just a second, but this particular client that I emailed a number of years ago, I started receiving, this is, this is a client that I, that I get regular work from and all kinds of different work. And it just so happened that at one point in time, several years ago, I started to get more and more medical narration. Well, I really had not uh, developed my skill in narration, which primarily revolves around pronunciations. So it was not a very efficient and profitable venture for me. So in other words, I found myself, myself spending a lot of time looking at pronunciations and, and it was just taking me, my net, you know, my net income just wasn't very much. And it was much, you know, I could make more money doing other stuff in voiceover faster. And so because it was so difficult and my, you know, my pay based on the time spent because of all the work researching pronunciations, I told my client to please exclude me from any medical narration work. Thinking, you know, trying to make a smart business move because you do want, you want to focus on the areas where you can make the most money. My mistake was I didn't, I didn't think big picture and longer term. I was thinking more immediate. So fast forward a number of years. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's four or five years ago. <clears throat> fast forward to today. Medical narration is now a huge chunk of what I do. Be careful what you wish for or what you wish not to get because it might just be what lands in your lap. Over time, people, you know, I would get a job here, a job there, a job there. Well, now you would be hard pressed to find a pharmaceutical company that I don't do work for. I do boatloads of pharmaceutical work. I do a lot of other medical narration. And over that time, I've slowly developed the vocabulary and the ability to navigate a lot of that terminology. And I would say, if you were to look back over the past several years, I mean, you know, medical, pharmaceutical could account for as much as 20, 25% of my work. I mean, it's, it's a pretty significant chunk of my, of my income. And I don't hate it anymore because now I'm, I'm comfortable with it because I learned it. I want to encourage you to not come into voiceover with blinders on. A lot of people will say, well, find, you know, when you get into voiceover, find your niche, find your niche, get it figured out as soon as you can to be successful. 
No, don't do that because it could it could really pigeonhole you and make it difficult for you to make the money that you need to sustain yourself as a full-time voiceover talent. You need to go in with eyes wide open, looking for opportunities. Sure, go after the things that you want to go after. You might find out that those work out well for you. They may not. You may uh, also, there may be areas where you're like, you know, gosh, I've never done character work. Believe me, I have no background in acting. And when people approach me with uh, like video game character jobs, I've been, why in the world would they want me to do that? But if they come to you, it's because they heard something that they liked. And now I've enjoyed doing those things. I, you know, I've, I've talked about uh, not all that long ago doing, uh, doing dubbing, it did uh, dubbing my voiceover for, uh, you know, a pretty major movie. And it was like, whoa, I mean, that's not my background. I, I didn't train for that. I, did, I wasn't even looking for that. Somebody found me based on my demos. And I was, you know, you're tempted to say, no, no, I can't, I don't want to do that because you don't want to embarrass yourself. You don't, nobody likes to feel uncomfortable and, and incompetent. But the reality is that's the path that you have to walk to develop in any area is that path of incompetency and discomfort and not being an expert because after a little while, you start to get pretty good at it, or at least you might get pretty good at it, but you won't know unless you pursue it. So come into voiceover, or even if you've been in it for a while, take the blinders off, think broadly. When opportunities come your way that you're a little uncomfortable with, and you're afraid you're going to embarrass yourself, do it anyhow. They asked you for a reason. They've heard something that they liked. And so go for it because it might become your new thing. You just never, never, never know. Okay. Well, hopefully I've given you all time to go into the Spring Fever link below and check that all out. If you haven't, make sure that you do that because remember, this is limited time. So I want to make sure you get in on that. Let's see what's going on in the uh, chat this morning. Uh, let's see here. I said hello to Nephi in Knoxville. Congrats on being number one today, Nephi. We've got Bob in North Carolina, Rusty in the UP of Michigan. Excuse me just a second. That was a, kind of a long ramble, and I, I needed some Michigan cherry coffee. Feeling much better there. We've got Emma in Huntington Beach, Risk, Rick in Des Moines, Corey. Happy Taco Tuesday to you in Wisconsin. Bill in Boise, Rob in beautiful Bali. Oh, that sounds so good. I uh, keep waiting for something good to happen here weather-wise. Man, it was, I mean, the wind blew so hard all night last night. It rained crazy. Mike in sunny Madawin, New Jersey. We've got Dave in New York City. We've got David in Gardner, Kansas. Alex in Utah. Marla in Texas. Christopher in Jacksonville. Dennis, what's up across the way? We got Ty in Warsaw, Indiana. John in Rhinebeck, New York, that is. Denise in Long Island. Dale in Atlanta. Anthony, North Carolina. And another Anthony, back to back. Good morning from Phoenix. Either that or he's a time traveler. Tina in uh, Sweden. Good afternoon to you. GS in Longview, Washington. Mary, hello to you in New Jersey. Mike in Spanish Fort, Alabama. Ralph, Cedar Falls. Sandra in the Columbus, Ohio area. Old Worthington. Mark in sunny Estes Park, Colorado. Laura in snowy St. Paul, Minnesota. Joy in Southfield, Michigan. Jason, uh, let's see here. Good spring break morning in St. Louis. Time to learn voiceover, Pastor Nathan. Oh, by the way, got a question I want to ask you guys. So hang tight. As soon as I get through the roll call here, I, I want to ask you a question. I would value your input. We've got Nathan on. Good morning to you. Your ongoing optimism, Nathan says, and encouragement. It means so much. Listening from Spring Mills, Pennsylvania. Thank you, Nathan. Very kind. I appreciate that. We've got Dr. Bob in snow-free Clearwater, Florida. Oh, the place to be. Rebecca, I love, I love Clearwater. Rebecca in Michigan. Robert, good morning to you in Atlanta. Wayne in Port Orchard, Washington, at the foot of the snow-capped Olympic Mountains. Ivan in Chesterfield, UK. Ivan, welcome. Aaron, hello to you in Como. Uh, Gene in Dallas, Fort Worth. We've got Jess in Austin, Texas. It's Ryan from Farmville, Virginia. Melissa in San Diego. Julie in Hummelstown, Pennsylvania. JR, also wishing me a happy Taco Tuesday from sunny Austin, Texas. You know, my daughter Mallory and her family, they have, they have tacos every Tuesday. So if I want to do Taco Tuesday, all I have to do is literally walk three doors down. And the, every Tuesday night, they're there. Gotta love that. 
Uh, Henry from Rockford. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Thank you, Henry. Megan says, good morning from Manitoba. Have a fantastic day. Matt in central New Jersey. Buddy from Charlotte, North Carolina. Just landed my first paid voiceover job. <laughs> Ring the bell for you, buddy. A mini documentary on drug safety. An amazing feeling to officially and legitimately call myself a VO professional. Yeah, absolutely, buddy. That's, there is no better feeling. Uh, you'll be you'll be chasing that high for the rest of your life, as they say. It's a it's a good feeling, uh, and certainly worth pursuing. Good morning to you, Keith, and right in Washington, Ethan in Toronto, Greg in Winnipeg, Sarah. Good morning in Wisconsin, Theo. Y'all don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Thank you, Theo. Scotty says thanks, Coach Bill. Blustery South Dakota. Jess, every day is Taco Tuesday if you believe in yourself. Absolutely. Speaking of which, there's this um, there's a taco truck that operates out of a gas station a few miles from here that has the best tacos. I, that uh, is of no help to you, I guess, unless you come for a visit. But it's, you know when you, you find that spot, it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know a taco could taste this good. It's that kind of place. So, okay. So yesterday, I was having a conversation with my, uh, my voiceover training business partner. And we were talking about um, starting to take the show on the road. Seriously, take the show on the road, start to do some live events around the country, maybe around the world, possibly. What I'm interested in is finding out where there's interest. Obviously, you know, we want to go where people want to want to attend and be a part of it. So a couple of things. Um, is that something that you would find interesting? Is that something you think you would want to attend if it were within a few hours of where you live? Um, those of you who are as a matter of fact, those of you who are in like more of a, like a voiceover leadership, maybe you, you do a meetup group or you're part of a larger group, um, and you'd be interested in helping to spread the word, drop me an email at training at buildawees.com, training at buildawees.com. And the subject just put uh, live event. And then let me know the market or the area that you're in and a little more about your interest in getting involved. It's been, you know, believe it or not, uh, I've been on the road a number of times. I've done a couple of, of events in uh, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, here in the Chicago area. Yeah, I think that's it for maybe four, four live events. And we haven't done it for years. And just discussing the possibility of doing it again, I think it could be a lot of fun. And uh, if there's, you know, the interest to do it. I uh, would also love to take take this uh, show on the road to Europe as well, where I know we've, I've seen a lot of folks here on the live stream. And a lot of people have expressed interest. So uh, I'm not just talking U.S. I'm talking, it could be anywhere that, you know, if you're interested, uh, let me know. Okay, guys, thanks for being here. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.